Cool. Um, so, welcome to the Breakfast Bash. Um, today's going to be a little different. Um, I have this idea. I kind of want to talk about like different data structures over the next few weeks. Um, just starting from some basic ones and kind of building up to some more complicated ones. Um, so the first one I think is probably it's one of the most simple data structures I could think of, um, and that's the stack. Um, so what a stack is, is essentially, you can think of it as like a stack of pancakes almost, um, but it can hold whatever types of things you want it to hold. Um, so here's a, a simple picture of a stack. Um, at the bottom we have a nine, on top of it 12, two, and 22. Um, the thing at the top we call the head of the stack, and any element of the stack is called a stack frame. Um, and stacks are used in various applications in computer science, and they're also used um, at the hardware level to, to do stuff um, like keep track of function calls and programming languages and things like that. So when you hear the, the phrase stack overflow, it's talking about one of these. Um, but they're used for more than just... Uh, just the uh, the programming language semantics uh, ideas. So, uh, without further ado, let's get started. Um, basically, all all data structures are just going to have a structure and then some operations that you can perform on them. And these operations can be used to do to perform various algorithms and and whatnot. So. Um, the first thing, so a stack can do two things. Um, the first thing you can do with a stack is you can push things onto it. So if I have this stack 9, 12, and 2, and, um, and I want to push something on top of it, um, originally the head of the stack is going to be here at 2. But when we push um, 401 onto the stack, we end up with the stack 9, 12, Two and then 401s at the top, and the head is now 401. That's basically how it works. Um, very simple. Uh, the other operation, the other main operation on a stack, is called pop. And what pop does is, if we are starting with the, if we're starting with this stack with 401 at the top. Um, by the way, this should be the push and with a 401 as an argument. I didn't add that there, but that's kind of what this would re represent. Um, but if we were starting with this stack in, in the next slide, then pop would pop off that, that 22, or I, I'm sorry, 22. So if we start with this stack, we pop, we get 22 back, we just pop off the head of the list, or the, the head of the stack, and move the, the, uh, the head pointer down to the next element. Um, and that's really all there is to a stack. Um, the other operation that's commonly cited is the uh, check for emptiness. So, if so, there might be a method called um, empty that you can call on a stack, and it will just return whether or not the stack has any elements at all. Um, and that'll be useful. So, the next thing I'm going to talk about is actually an application of uh, like a, a simple problem that stacks can be used for. Um, and I think it, it's not too difficult of an application, um, but it's a, a, actually a really interesting result, and it's kind of it's kind of fun. So um, this might look a little crazy, but um, so this is like an example of just some like Lisp code, right? Um, you have Basically, you've got an expression here that says add the result of multiplying 100 by 6 and the result of dividing 100 by 10 together. Um, and it doesn't really matter what that means. Um, but the problem is we want to check whether or not this expression is well formed, um, meaning we want to make sure that there's no unmatched parentheses in it. Or um, we want to make sure that like every parenthesis pair 
every parenthesis like has a pair that it's associated to. Um, and this is a very common use of a stack. It's one of the, like the uh, it, it's a really cool al algorithm for for doing this kind of thing. So basically, what you do is um, you can take this string and tokenize it into characters. And every time you see a an open parentheses, you push it onto a stack. So you'll start with a stack, and when you see the first open parentheses, you push that onto the stack. So we see a parentheses here, and we push it onto the stack. Um, next, we see this plus, and plus is not an open or closed parentheses, so we skip it. Um, and you just continue to do this. And then whenever you see a closed parentheses, you pop off of the stack. So we don't we just discard the result in this case. Um, but whenever you see a closed parentheses, you just pop one of those parentheses that you pushed onto the stack off of the stack. And what happens is if you go through your expression and at the end of at the end of the expression, you have an empty stack again, then you're good to go. Um, and so basically all this does is make sure that you don't have, so in the case of, if we had too many open brackets, we'd still have something left on this stack. And if we had too many closed brackets, we'd be trying to pop something off of an empty stack at some point, which would trigger a failure basically. So if we ever try to pop something off of uh, an empty stack, it should fail. And um, and so that's like a very simple application. Um, this I'm kind of like I'm kind of oversimplifying this a little bit because this can actually be done just using a simple counter. Um, if you go over these and just start with an empty counter, start start with a counter at zero, and as you encounter open parentheses, you add one to the counter. As you encounter closed parentheses, you subtract one from the counter. You can do exactly the same thing. Um, but the interesting thing about this is you can actually generalize this to more than just parentheses and closed parentheses. So in this case, we have sort of two, two types of paired um, like grouping operators, I guess you would call them. So we have these parentheses here, just as before, but then we also have the um, quotes. Um, and so what we can do here is we can do the same thing, except whenever we encounter a, like whenever we encounter an open um, group element, so either an open parentheses or an open quotes, we push that onto the stack. And then when we pop, instead of just simply popping and disregarding the result, we um, we have to make sure that um, so when we pop, we want to make sure that we're popping off the correct type of element. So in the case of encountering a closed parentheses. Um, when we pop something, when we pop something off the stack, we expect it to be an open parentheses. And in, when we encounter a a, a quote, uh, a closed quote, and we pop, we expect to see a closed quote. So this actually this will handle a lot of different cases than before. So we we could have so assume that. For, for the sake of argument that strings can't be, they can't contain open and closed parentheses. Like the, the parentheses inside of a string is gonna be interpreted as the, a part of the, the grouping of parentheses. Um, just for, for the sake of demonstration here. Um, if we had, for instance, if this okay, if this, uh, if this closed parentheses was moved inside of the OK here, then we'd have a grouping of parentheses between um, here and here. So, but in in that case, we would have um, a, a parentheses outside of the quote, and that that would mess things up because um, like you just don't want that to happen. So, um, I kind of. 
I wish I could edit this. So if, if this was length and this was a list or something, and you, you just had open brackets and close brackets here, you could kind of see how, how that might look. Let me see if I can actually pull something up here. So one sec. Here. Okay, so let's say we have like the expression like plus 10 and then like length of 1, 2, 3. Uh, so this is a well formed expression, but as soon as you do this, it's not. And so what would happen if we did the same algorithm on, on this expression here, we would push a push an open parentheses, push an open parentheses, push an open bracket, and then we pop a closed parentheses. But the last thing, like the, the, the thing at the head of the stack that we pop off in this case is an open bracket. And that indicates that we have some kind of error here. Um, we're trying to close an open bracket with a closed parentheses, which is not what we want. So I think that's probably a better example than the one that I'm giving here. Um, but you can kind of see the, the similarities here. It's the same sort of thing. Um, imagine, you can imagine that we have also like a third set of brackets or even a fourth set of brackets, and we want to make sure that um, everything is matched properly. We can kind of do this in a, in a very general way. Um, and so, yeah, so that's stacks. That's probably, um, I mean, it's kind of short, but that's really all there is to it. Stacks are very simple data structures, but they're useful as I hope you guys have seen. So um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, otherwise, I think I'm good. Thanks, Ben. That was really good. All right. Yeah, thank you. Yep. See you guys later.